Hey folks, you clicked on this video, you know what time it is. In today's Wrath of Math lesson, we'll be proving Euler's formula or Euler's identity for connected plane graphs. Let G be a connected plane graph, which means G has been drawn in the plane with no edge crossings. It's got N vertices, M edges, and R regions. Then the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of regions is equal to two. Really beautiful result, we'll be proving it today. No Notice one of the things this result tells us. The number of vertices and the number of edges is never going to change in a graph. No matter how you draw it, it's got the same number of vertices and edges. 2 also doesn't change. 2 is 2. So this tells us no matter how we draw a planar graph in the plane, as long as it's a plane drawing, meaning it has no edge crossings, the number of regions will always be the same. There's no way to change the num number of regions in a plane drawing of a planar graph, which is pretty sweet. Let's just see one quick example of this result because I wouldn't want to start the proof without it. I think it's really Incredible. It's like a magic trick, you know? So here's a planar graph. It's got four vertices. How many edges does it have? One, two, three, four, five. Five edges. And how many regions does it divide the plane into? Well, it's got one, two regions, three regions. So three regions. Four minus five plus three is two. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? If you need a quick recap on plane graphs, and uh, planar graphs and regions and whatnot, I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson introducing them. Now, let me quickly provide just a little bit of motivation for what we are about to do. This proof, uh, this result is often proven using induction, which works very well. Induction on the number of edges specifically. We're going to do a proof by minimum counterexample, which logically is very, very similar. We're using the same sort of information for that proof. But in either case, one of the things we'll eventually want to do is we'll have a graph and we're going to want to delete an edge from the graph in order to have a connected plane graph with fewer edges. The thing is, how do we know we'll be able to delete an edge and still have a connected plane graph? Well, if the graph is a tree, we won't be able to do that. In a tree graph, which is a connected graph with no cycles, deleting any edge will disconnect the graph. So where we are going, we can't take tree graphs with us, which means we gotta take care of tree graphs now. So the first thing we're gonna do is prove the result for connected plane graphs that are tree graphs. Again, that means they have no cycles. So that's what we'll write here to start things off. Let G be a tree. Now, thankfully, if G is a tree, it's pretty easy to verify that Euler's formula is going to hold. How many vertices does our tree graph G have? Well, we laid out the vertices, edges, and regions in our hypothesis. We're going to call the number of vertices N, so we'll just write that. It's got N vertices. Now, what about edges? How many edges does our tree graph G have? Well, we're calling that M, but for a tree graph, we can do better. Every tree graph has one less edge than it has vertices. So that's n minus one edges. One less edge than it has vertices. If you're not familiar with that result, check the description. I'll leave a link to a lesson proving it. There'll be all sorts of relevant links there in the description. Okay, so that's pretty nice. Now, how about the number of regions? How many regions does a plane drawing of a tree graph have? Well, we're calling that number R, but again, with a tree graph, we can do better. If you look at some plane drawings of a tree graph, what you'll find is that they all have the same exact number of regions. Here's just an example to look at. That number of regions is one, just the unbounded external region. To think about why that is, the plane starts off as a single region. The only way to split it up into a second region, to get another region out of the plane, is to close a curve, is to have a curve that's closed, which in graph theory terms is going to be a cycle. That would close a curve, and then we'd be able to have 
an additional region. But we're talking about trees. So if we're drawing a tree in the plane with no edge crossings, we're never gonna have a closed curve because the only way to have a closed curve to create an additional region would be with a cycle. And these are trees, so they don't have cycles. So any plane graph that is a tree is only gonna have a single region. Beautiful. So we can write that here, the number of regions is one. Because you would need a cycle in order to get more regions, tree graphs that are drawn in a planar manner, that are drawn with no edge crossings, they, they're not going to have any closed curves to create those additional regions. And now we can just check our formula. Does it work? The number of vertices n minus the number of edges n minus 1 plus the number of regions, which is 1. What is this equal to? We'll distribute the negative. n minus n plus 1, that's minus negative 1, so that's plus 1, and then plus 1, plus the number of regions. And what's that equal to, my friends? Bam, bam, 1 plus 1, it's 2, it works. Wonderful. So we have now proven Euler's formula for connected plane trees. Wonderful. So all we have left to worry about for the rest of the proof are graphs that are not trees, as in graphs that well, we're talking about connected graphs. So if it's not a tree, that means it does have cycles. So now we can move on to the minimum counterexample part of the proof. This is a sort of proof by contradiction method. So what we'll say is suppose for the sake of contradiction, SFC, suppose for the sake of contradiction that our result does not hold. Then let's get a little more specific. Among all graphs, all connected plane graphs that violate this result, let's consider one of minimum size, one that has the minimum number of possible edges. Again, we're supposing for contradiction our result doesn't hold. Among all graphs that violate the result, which means they have to be connected plane graphs that don't satisfy this equality, among all graphs that violate the result, we're going to pick one out of minimum size. So here's what we're saying. Suppose for the sake of contradiction that among all of our counterexamples, G is a connected plane graph that's a minimum counterexample. So it's got minimum size that we're going to call M such that N minus M plus R is not equal to 2. It's violating our result. Again, we're calling the number of vertices N. Its minimum size is M and its number of regions is are. So any connected plane graph with fewer than m edges must satisfy the result because we're saying this is a minimum counterexample. Then the basic idea of what we're going to do is delete an edge from G and try to look at a connected graph with fewer edges that we know must satisfy the result and then we're going to get a contradiction out of that. So let's just talk a little bit about G. If G is a connected plane graph that doesn't satisfy our result, what do we know about G? Well, we know that it cannot be a tree graph because we already showed that all trees satisfy our result. So G is not a tree. Since G is connected, not being a tree means that G has a cycle because tree graphs are connected graphs with no cycles. So if G is connected and isn't a tree, it has a cycle. So we can say that here, G has a cycle. In particular, we're going to specify just name an edge of the cycle. So G has a cycle with edge, we'll call the edge E, one of my favorite edge names. Notice, by the way, since G has a cycle, we know that its size, M, has to be greater than zero because it has a cycle, so it's got to have some edges. That's nice because we're going to want to delete an edge from G, so it's good that it has some edges. Very nice. Okay, so again, we want to delete an edge from G. G is a connected plane graph, and we want to delete an edge to give us another connected plane graph that has fewer edges. So how can we do that? Well, G is a plane graph for starters, and certainly if we delete an edge, we'll still have a plane graph. We can't add an edge crossing by deleting an edge. So we don't have to worry about it being a plane graph. As long as we delete an edge, we'll have a plane graph still. Now what about the edge that we delete? We want to make sure the edge we delete does not disconnect the graph, because if it disconnects the graph, our result doesn't apply to the graph that we get. Thankfully, if an edge is on a cycle, we can delete it without disconnecting the graph. Deleting an edge will disconnect the graph if and only if that edge 
doesn't lie on a cycle. If you're not familiar with that result, again, check the description. There'll be a link to a lesson proving it. So since our edge E lies on a cycle, we know we can delete it without disconnecting the graph. Magnificent. So let's do that. Consider the graph G minus E. We've deleted the edge E from our connected plane graph G. Since E lies on a cycle, we know that G minus E is connected. We know G minus E is still a plane graph because again, we can't add an edge crossing that wasn't there by deleting an edge. What else do we know about G minus E? Well, let's talk a little bit about it. We'll just put a little colon there. How many vertices does G minus E have? Well, it must have n vertices, right? Because G had n vertices and we didn't delete any of those. So it's got n vertices. How many edges does G minus E have? Well, G had m edges, a size of m. We deleted one. So G minus E has m minus one edges. Now, what about the regions? How many regions does G minus E have? That seems a little bit trickier. Well, we said that G had R regions. So how is deleting an edge from a cycle going to affect that number of regions? Well, let's draw a graph here on the left to start to get an idea of the answer to that question. Now remember, kind of like we were talking about earlier, in order to add a region, we need to close a curve, which for graphs means creating a cycle, adding an edge like this, and then bam, we have an additional region. Deleting an edge, breaking a cycle, or breaking a closed curve, all that does is take the internal region, the region that that cycle enclosed, and it becomes part of the external region uh, that's outside of it. Even if we have a slightly different situation like this, we can create another region in here by closing a curve. If we break the curve by deleting an edge from the cycle, all that does is reduce the number of regions by one. There were, you know, here there are three regions, R1, R2, and R3. And if we break this cycle by deleting an edge from the cycle, all that happens is that two regions merge. And so the total number of regions is reduced by one. So when we delete this edge E from a cycle of the graph G, all we're doing is merging two regions together. And now the number of regions has decreased by one. So G had R regions. G minus E is going to have R minus one regions. All right, now what's the really important thing we know about the graph G minus E? Well, again, it's a connected plane graph and its size, its number of edges is less than M, which is how many edges G had, which means that G minus E does satisfy our result because G was a connected plane graph of minimum size that didn't satisfy our result. So if G minus E has fewer edges, which it does, it's got to satisfy the result. Otherwise, G wouldn't be a minimum counterexample. So let's just write the result that we know G minus E satisfies. And let me change the color here so it stands out a little more. We'll use orange. We know the number of vertices of G minus E, N, minus its number of edges, which is M minus 1, plus the number of regions, which is R minus 1, must be equal to 2. Okay, well, this is begging for a little bit of simplification. We'll do some distribution here. This is N minus M and then minus uh, negative 1, so plus 1, and then plus R minus 1 is equal to 2. Look at this, plus 1, minus 1, they go away. What we're left with is the number of vertices N minus M plus R is equal to two. This is a statement of the result for the number of vertices, edges, and regions of our original graph G. And this is it, my friends. This is a contradiction that completes the proof. We suppose that G was among all counterexamples to our result, assuming that it wasn't true, G was a counterexample with the minimum number of edges. So G, we knew that this was true about G. Its number of vertices minus its number of edges plus its number of regions isn't equal to two. It doesn't satisfy the result. But we see G minus E, which must satisfy the result, leaves us 
to this equation, which is equivalent to this, which is a contradiction. This is n minus m plus r is equal to two, when we had assumed for contradiction that it's not equal to two, to two and there's a contradiction that we assumed it for. Beautiful, and so we have shown in, in two parts, sort of, that for any connected plane graph that has n vertices, m edges, and r regions, n minus m plus r has to equal two. It's unavoidable, it's beautiful, and that is the proof of Euler's formula for plane graphs that are connected. We can also do a little bit of work to generalize this result slightly differently for disconnected plane graphs as well. I encourage you to think about that, but this is where we'll leave it for today. So I hope this video helped you understand how to prove this beautiful theorem. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. If you would like to support the channel, I'd really appreciate a small donation on PayPal or small monthly pledge on Patreon. I'll leave links to those in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.